Happy weekend, my friends. Welcome to This Week in News, where we go over all the hottest tech news that you may have missed during your breakfast this week, and I recap it for you on your Saturday morning breakfast trip. So get ready for This Week in News as we go over the hottest tech news that you may have missed. One of the biggest developments is that NVIDIA announced its RTX 3080 GeForce Now program, which will give subscribers higher access to better GPU performance as they stream their favorite games. 1440p, 120 FPS, potentially 4K 60, HDR on the Shield TV, ultra low latency, everything that you've come to expect from GeForce Now membership, but at an additional cost of $100 every six months. So $200 a year in order to get 1440p 120 frames per second streaming, which will likely require a lot of bandwidth. This is something that I think is probably Nvidia's final play move where they want to make sure that people are giving them recurring revenue. And the way you do that is by easily offering up a better experience than you can otherwise get on your home desktop. Which is why they quote numbers like the RTX 3080 membership, giving you 70 times increase for the average laptop on Steam, 13 times for an M1 based MacBook Air, and seven times for the most popular desktop configuration on Steam. They want you to know that you're inadequate and you need to give them your cash. Do it right now, RTX 3080, 1440p, 120 frames per second streaming on GeForce Now. Cloud gaming is the way of the future because they're just gonna stop selling GPUs to you all together and everything's gonna be cloud-based. You don't have good internet? Well, you should have thought of that when before Elon Musk and Jensen fused together with the Potara earrings and became the ultimate creation unknown to man where you got Starlink and GeForce Now beaming all the games directly to your Tesla. You think you want to live in that reality? You should. And I want to live in a reality where there's the RDNA 2 GPUs, I APUs rather is what I'm trying to say. And we got benchmarks this week of the Ryzen 6000 APUs, which actually does beat out a lot of the other competition on the market. In CPU, it goes kind of close toe to toe with Tiger Lake CPUs as well as the Ryzen 75800H. In GPU performance, it actually seems like it beats out the MX350 and the Iris Z DG1, which is a pretty good indication from something that's pre-release hardware. Very much looking forward to the next generation of APUs from AMD. And you could be looking forward to the next generation of CPUs from Intel. We've got indication of the release date. October 27th is when we're expecting them to be announced and available for pre-order for Intel's Alder Lake. And then reviews and sales will actually happen on November 4th. So just now this week, this coming week is when you should be able to get these bad boys, which somebody actually did but don't necessarily expect that's going to work with everything right out of the gate because it's brand new architecture, heterogeneous architecture, which I've gotten crap for people. To, I'll talk about this in comment response tomorrow, but I just want to say people are like, oh, you're saying heterogeneous wrong, but people say homogeneous all the time. Heterogeneous, homogeneous, homogeneous. Heterogeneous. Doesn't matter, all right? I'm just pronouncing it how I want. Alder Lake might have compatibility issues with some DRM software, and it can hit up to 330 watts when overclocked, just like Comet Lake Daddies. Oh, my goodness, PC gamers, still bothering me a couple days later. But you know what's not bothering me? Not being able to play PlayStation games on my PC, because Sony is making that more and more of a reality. God of War coming to PC on January 14th, 2022. It's gonna have 4K support, it's gonna have unlocked frame rate, wide screen support, ultra wide rather, and it's also gonna support NVIDIA's DLSS as well as Reflex technology for only $50 on Steam and Epic Games. CD Projekt Red announced this week that they are delaying the current gen upgrades to Cyberpunk 2077 for the consoles as well as The Witcher 3's current gen upgrade for PC and the consoles, but them saying Cyberpunk will come in the Q1 of 2022 and The Witcher 3 will come in Q2 of 2022. This disappointed me greatly because I've been anticipating replaying The Witcher 3 and now I will just have to do it now and then replay it in like June when, when the Q2 update comes out. Also getting delayed is Elden Ring by five weeks. It's not coming out until February 25th, 2022, which pushes it back to the very busy month of February 2022. A lot of games being launched at that time. And at this time, it appears that Facebook might be considering a name change, a way to rebrand the company, likely uh, on a, with a focus on their metaverse concept that they're focusing on with the fact that they have Instagram, WhatsApp, Oculus, they want to merge them all together in one platform. Mark Zuckerberg saying previously that they'll effectively transition from being a social media company to a metaverse company, whatever the heck that means. There's some speculation that this likely means that Facebook will still remain facebook.com, but the parent company will become metaverse, just like Alphabet is the parent company of Google, something similar to that. But you know what else is changing the game, changing the way that you see things? NZXT and their build PC build 
building kits, all right? You think you can get a pre-built from NZXT, no problem. Well, now you can, but you have to assemble it all yourself. Coming with instructions, all of the warranties and benefits that you get from a pre-built, you just have to put in the work on your end, which there was a lot of positive response from you guys this week on this because it does seem like it's actually done particularly well by NZXT. And you know what was done well by Dbrand? Them copying Sony on the faceplates that go on the PlayStation 5. They did it so well that Sony issued them a cease and desist for their design patent and made it so that they had to remove their PS5 dark plates from their website because it violated Sony's patent. However, they got around it just a couple days later, totally just a whole marketing publicity stunt that they pulled off here with a new faceplate that has number one airflow, number two doesn't violate the design patent and looks completely different uh, by co cutting off the sides. You no longer have popped collar PS5, you have regular collar PS5, t-shirt PS5, which is what's going on here. You could also buy them with light strips as well. And I'm still hotly debating whether or not I wanna get a Hot News branded dark plate from Dbrand. I already have the regular dark plates. Do I need these? No, but the extra fan holes might make it so that it performs better in the long run. And then also it'd be Hot News colored with the, uh, I could also just buy like LEDs by myself. I'm, I'm very torn about whether or not I should spend $80 on this, but I'm not torn on whether or not I should buy a new MacBook Pro because those got announced this week. Get it notch because it, MacBook has a notch on it. Now, anyways, uh, Apple announcing the latest 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro complete with the M1 Pro and M1 Max processors, also having MagSafe SD card slots, triple Thunderbolt ports, as well as the camera notch as well with removing the touch bar. And these M1 chips are looking mighty good. The M1 Pro up to 32 gigs of RAM, 33.7 billion transistors, 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, 200 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. The M1 Max also being incredibly impressive, 57 billion transistors up to 64 gigs of RAM, 10 core CPU, 32 core GPU, and 400 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, which puts it very close to the PS5's total memory bandwidth of 448. And these things with their GPU performance, those 32 cores should be up to 10.5 teraflops, which is exactly what a PS5 has. They're starting at $2,000, can go all the way up to $6,100, which makes sense for on-the-go productivity devices for professionals. This price is not actually all that outrageous for what uh, is likely going to be the best performing laptop on the market, just kind of bar none. But the best thing that Apple released this week was their polishing cloth for $19. You can rub this on your face for the low, low price of an Andrew Jackson. And talking about the new MacBook Pros being heavy hitters, we got new benchmarks coming out showing that the RTX 3080 laptop, 3070 laptop don't necessarily stand a chance in some of these benchmarks. And it's actually almost comparable to a 3070 desktop on the M1 Max processor. It loses out in some of the other benchmarks marks, but it does perform well overall, which gets me very excited for something that's only going to draw 60 watts in total. Very intrigued for that mobile solution. Also, there's some rumors indicating out there that AMD might have a 16 core mobile solution coming with Zen 4 on the Raphael APUs. We'll have to wait and see when that will potentially come out. And we don't have to wait anymore for Windows 11 to fix the AMD cache latency issue that was happening where Ryzen was performing to the detriment of roughly 15% in some instances, averaging roughly seven and a half percent behind just because of this latency bug, which now Microsoft has rolled that out to the insider program, not necessarily out to everybody else, but they are rolling out the ability for beta users to use Android apps, just like they promised on the release of Windows 11. It is now finally here. Even though you can only use it with like 50 apps and it's it's only through the Amazon App Store and there's no Google apps, it's not very good, uh, but it, ex it exists now. And I existed for this week in news to come back and cover all of the news that you may have missed this week. Let me know what was your favorite story that happened this week. I want to hear from you down below in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts are on anything that we covered. I always love to hear from you down below because I will respond to all of them in tomorrow's comment response video. Actually, I won't respond to today's video because I will have already filmed comment response by the time this video goes live. But from Monday through Friday, I'm going to respond to those tomorrow. Anyways, I'll see you in tomorrow's next episode of Hot News, my friends. Cheerios.